Hey y'all, welcome to Brave's uh, Exploration Overview Guide. Um, the goal with this uh, soon to be series is going to be um, have a bunch of, or just a few short videos, easy to digest, each one going over a particular aspect of exploration. Uh, this video is going to be your overview, uh, so I'm not going to actually go out and do any practical exploration. I'm just going to get you the information you need to get up and running, and then in another video, I'll start doing the practical exploration, the fun stuff. Um, one of the reasons I recommend doing exploration, besides it's a lot of fun, is it's really good ISK. It teaches you how to fly, especially around NullSec, how to avoid gate camps, so on and so forth, how to make safes, tacks, what have you. It's awesome. Uh, and it can get you can get started with it earlier on. You don't have to have a lot of skill points or anything of that nature. Uh, some of the cons, though, is it is high risk and it is hit or miss. I personally really like the high risk um, factor, I guess you can call it because it's it's exciting you know you could lose all your risk or you could go home with bank um, but the hit or miss part is kind of the pain in the butt just because of the RNG uh, just because of the RNG it is kind of a pain you could either go out you know and go 20 30 plus jumps spend two three hours on it and not find anything or you can go out and have the opposite effect and have a hundred million or you can go out and come back with 100, 200 millions worth of stuff, come back and get exploded, <laughs> get get blown up on a gate camp or something of that nature. So there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of ways your exploration run could end, but it is a lot of fun. It is really good isk. It is really easy to get into. Um, some of the skill, actually, you know what? Let's take a look. This so a lot of people end up doing their stuff inside of their ship hangar. It's kind of boring. So we're gonna do. I really like the Citadels because you can do this whole outside thing there. It's a little bit nicer to look at once it loads. There it is. I love that. Anyways, the skills that you need for exploration is going to be uh, astrometrics, archaeology, and hacking. Those three are going to be your primary skill. Astrometrics is going to reduce your scan time and increase scan accuracy so you spend less time in space and more time looting sites. Archaeology and hacking do the exact same thing. It's just the archaeology increases the strength of your relic analyzer whereas hacking increases the strength of your data analyzer um, which also allows you to hack quicker more effectively so you end up blowing up fewer cans and uh, you end up spending less time standing still in one spot where somebody could scan you down and come blow you up or steal your site or something of that nature the secondary skills are going to be your astrometric range, fi range finding, your astrometric pinpointing, and astrometric acquisition. Um, to the best of my knowledge, all three of which decrease scan time. Again, it's kind of a common thing you'll see going on here. Um, probably one of my least favorite things is scanning down these cosmic anomalies to get into these sites. I just really like the hacking mini game, and I like seeing the loot. Uh, and then covert ops and racial frigate. Covert Ops is going to let you fly the Covert Ops. Uh, it's going to let you use the module, the Covert Ops cloaking device, which allows you to warp around all cloaked up, which is really, really useful uh, for getting through gate camps and you know flying around undetected and so on and so forth. Uh, Racial Frigate is going to come into play with our ships, um, and some of the you know you can fly any ship you want. Any ship that can fit a core probe launcher is going to be viable. Those are all fine. But you're going to have a hard time scanning. You're going to have a hard time hacking. So what is typically recommended is some of these T1 ships. So let me go ahead and pull this up. The T1 Covert Ops frigates. Uh, the reason for that is they all have actually the same bonuses. Bonus to, I think, uh, what is it? Probe strength and virus strength. So let's take a look here. We'll, go, we'll start from Amar. The Amar T1 frigate for exploration is going to be this magnate here. Kaldari is going to be the Heron. Galante is going to be the Imicus. And the Mimitar is going to be the Probe. Let's just take a look at them. Probe's kind of a cool looking ship. Uh, again, they all have the same bonus, so it doesn't really matter which one you fly. Uh, what does matter, however, is going to be the the way you can fit them, the kind of slots and stuff that they have. Um, a lot of people typically recommend the Kaldari over the others because it does have... I'll pull that one up here, the Kaldari Heron. Look at it because it does have five mid slots. So typically your your exploration fit's gonna require three, four mid slots. There it is. 
Kaldari Heron. Kind of hard to see with this dark background. Um, there. Five minutes slot. So you're going to have, you know, your analyzers. You're going to have your warp, uh, your micro warp drive, and whatever else it is that you require. And then you've got extra bonuses to for. Uh, pardon me, extra slots. It's kind of hard to click around while you're talking. You got extra slots that you can equip various other things with. Um, I actually, you could either use it for more tank, I use it for extra scan strength, and we'll get into that when we get in the fittings. Uh, and so this is the Amar T1 frigate here. There. Eventually you'll end up getting into the T2 stuff, which looks the exact same, but as you can see here, it's got much, much better bonuses, and the T2 is where you start to be able to equip the Covert Ops Cloak. The one you can stay cloaked up and warp around and kind of slow boat around with versus the regular uh, cloak it's not covert ops I don't know what it's called it's just the regular cloak you, you stay put and then you can cloak up and you can do that uh, the alternative the kind of in between is going to be the sisters of Eve ships the Astero um, a lot of people really like this ship uh, because it is tankier you are able to fight back a bit more it's got some more teeth on it uh, in the form of drones and it does have really good exploration bonuses. The downside of that is it's very, very expensive. An another pro to that, another uh, plus side to that is that you can sit in it much easier than you could sit into a T2. And I think that's about it for the ships. Um, there is the Stratios, which is like the Asteros Big Brother. As you can see, there are far more things, but you don't really have to go past a level three s skill, but it does require more skills. And it's ridiculously expensive. So if you do go out and you do end up getting loot, or even if you don't get any loot and you end up getting caught by a gate camp or something and you get uh, exploded, you get potted, what have you, you kind of take a huge hit there. So that's why I personally fly T2 and I fly T2 Kaldari. Um, so speaking of all those fits, let me go ahead and pull mine up and kind of see here what we're looking at so I'm sitting in the heron here I'm not sitting in my buzzard uh, we currently don't have any buzzards on market it's a bit uh, frustrating but the heron is also a very viable ship so again these are your mid slots these are your low slots these are your high slots and these are your rigs primary things to fit are going to be let's take a look here it's going to be your core probe launcher core probe launcher if I can if I can learn to read uh, and that's going to spit out your Core scanner probes. These is what these are what you're going to be using to scan down cosmic anomalies to get to your sites. The two biggest sites are going to be your relic and your data sites, which you need relic and data analyzers for. So that once you warp to your site, you can start hacking, gain access to your loot. Um, those are your four primary things: your probe launcher, scanner probes, data relic analyzer. You always need a micro warp drive. That way, when you're bouncing around between cans, you don't take forever to do it. Speed is kind of of the essence when you're doing exploration. Everything else is kind of optional. Again, I have these, which uh, increase the strength and accuracy of my scanning. This kind of makes my ships more nimble, what have you. Uh, but again, everything is going to be up to personal taste and how you fly. Uh, last but not least is the prototype cloaking device. This is the tier one. This is not the covert ops one. So you have to stay put before you can cloak up. I recommend the covert ops one. It's just, it's so useful. It's almost, it almost feels like cheating sometimes, but it's not. But it's just really good. And that's that's really about all there is to it for this overview. Um, the next video we'll be doing, I will be going out. <coughs> I will be flying this fit, this exact one you see here. Uh, to go out exploring and see what we can come out with. Look how cheap this is. This is roughly 3.1 million isk. If I end up getting this blown up, it's no big deal because I can pull time. If I if I even pull home 30 million worth of loot, I have made 10 times <laughs> my ship's worth. So it's pretty great. Exploration is a it's a really great skill to get into. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've kind of given you some heads up on some information that is going to be useful. And the next video, hopefully, is going to be a lot more fun. Thank you.